post-marathon pitfalls, avoid these five common mistakes. Have you just finished a marathon? Well, congratulations. You have accomplished something only less than 1% of the U.S. population has done before. A marathon is an incredible accomplishment and one that deserves some serious respect. And this week, 50,000 people finished the New York City Marathon, and I am entering my fifth week after running my third marathon in Cape Cod the same day that was the world record-breaking Chicago Marathon in 2023. Therefore, I have post-marathon recovery on the brain, and I wanted to share what happens when that finish line euphoria fades away. Discover the common mistakes runners make after crossing that marathon finish line and how to stay on track for long-term success. In this episode, I'm sharing common mistakes many, many marathoners make after crossing the finish line to keep your running journey strong and injury-free. This advice will help steer you clear of five common post-marathon pitfalls, ensuring a smooth and speedy recovery. From nutrition to rest, we cover it all, providing you with the knowledge you need to make most of your post-race period. Don't jeopardize your progress by falling into these avoidable traps. Join us and learn how to maintain a healthy and effective post-marathon routine. Whether you just ran New York or you ran your marathon like I did in early October, or maybe you're listening to this before or just after the Disney marathon, I'm going to be there this year in 2024 as well, or you ran Houston, or you ran Boston in April, or you're like our client Susanna, who is going to crush her Providence marathon debut. These principles will still apply to you, and they are going to help you recover properly after your next marathon. As a running health expert, I help runners avoid these post-marathon pitfalls and guide them toward a more balanced and injury-free running journey. So let's get started on your journey today. I'm going to help you maximize your recovery from your marathon because recovery is a part of the training and you can supplement this training by getting your free copy of the ultimate guide to recovery for runners with a ton of supplemental resources, videos, visuals, and content that will help provide context for what you will learn today. You can feel fresh, reduce fatigue, and stay healthy for running with proper recovery following my seven-step plan. You will learn how to incorporate rest days, sleep, foam rolling, massage, stretching, compression socks, proper foot care, all within this resource. These have been the true tried and tested strategies that have kept all the runners I work with on a one-on-one basis as a running physical therapist and coach really healthy optimizing recovery so my runners can really finally learn how to get over their injury for good and never have it come back again during their next training cycle. So go ahead and download your free ebook by going to learn.sparkhealthyrunner.com forward slash recovery and get the resource to get all of the bonus content I talked about or wherever you're watching this, click the link in the show notes and you can get that download. By the way, are you guys liking my Cape Cod Marathon hat? Let me know in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube because I've never done an episode wearing a hat before and this was one that I saw in the expo and I couldn't resist the urge um, to really commemorate the epic marathon and getting my 23-minute PR and I actually wore, wore this during the race because it was so breathable. So check out the little holes on the side. You know, you got to love a nice breathable hat. It's going to allow the sweat to come out, can protect you from the sun, keep you cool during your marathon. Um, So let me know how you're liking the hat and let me know if I should wear more hats on uh, these episodes. So let's get into the five biggest post-marathon mistakes to steer clear of. Number one, not taking enough days off of running. Now, if you guys know me, I'm all about keeping running when you have an injury, when most people and most medical practitioners are going to tell you just to stop running till you have no pain, right? And we talk about that many times on this channel is how we can actually stay running while still recovering from injury. However, the marathon is no joke. 
I am very, very firm on this, that all marathon runners, I don't care what your age is, what your experience level is, should take at minimum 10 days off with no running. If the professionals take two to three weeks off, I think us as recreational runners can at minimum take 10 to 14 days off with no running. Most runners are afraid they're going to lose their fitness after their race. Those were air quotes there listening to the audio version. And no one loses running fitness within two weeks without running. So I want you to really keep that in mind. And the physical effects of running a marathon are huge and need to be respected. When we run a marathon, muscles are damaged. The levels of muscle damage biomarkers remain elevated even after your muscles actually feel much better. And feeling better doesn't actually indicate full recovery. So when your muscle soreness resolves in three to four days, that doesn't mean that your muscles still aren't damaged from the 26.2 miles that you raced. The other effects throughout our body, the heart, there's been a lot of studies on this, has some lingering fatigue and it really takes six to nine days to return to actually normal heart function from a cellular level after running a marathon. So if you are going back to running before that six to nine day period and your heart isn't fully, you know, basically recovered from your race, think about, could you potentially be doing long-term damage there? Your kidneys are stressed during running a marathon. They've measured this as well. And then additionally, your lungs and your diaphragm are fatigued when we run a marathon. And that is why our lungs actually burn like after the race. For those that have been really pushing a hard marathon where you're breathing heavy, um, there, there is documented research that shows changes in pulmonary function, not only after the marathon, but for days after the marathon. And it is because of this that I really feel strongly that a marathon deserves a different level of respect than your half marathon races, than your 5K races. And, you know, what does this all mean for recovery? It just means that what happens to your body when you run a marathon really highlights the importance of proper recovery. So seven to 14 days off of running which really aligns when the biomarkers return to normal levels. And for those of you master runners, anyone over the age of 40 like myself, I highly recommend at minimum 10 days off with no running. And then just myself gone through this, I did 10 full days, no running. I went for a run on the 11th day. Um, didn't feel great and actually was going through a real high workload and stress level in terms of getting ready for a presentation at our uh, physical therapy state conference on running related injuries. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get great sleep because I was preparing for the presentation and I started you know, feeling like I was going to come down with a cold and getting sick. So I took more days off with no running to allow my body to actually fully recover. And didn't really go back to it until two full weeks off after the marathon. And so then I went back for my second run that was actually in that third week. And I, you know, that week on my third week, that was the second run. It was a 40 minute run. And just to give you guys an idea of, yes, I think 10 to 14 days off should be standard for really probably anyone listening to this. And Again, just highlighting the importance that it's not only our muscles that went through, you know, some fatigue during the marathon, but our organs, right? Our body systems that are essential to keep us um, living and they deserve some respect. So we have to take the 10 to 14 days off, no running. And then we need to gradually get back into our normal running routine. And I often see people jumping right back into five, six days of running, you know, going out for four or five milers, going out for a double digit long run right away. And we need to gradually get back into this. So I wanted to provide you an example of what I've been doing. My coach has designed for me. I did that one run. Week three, I went for a 40 minute run, 30 minute run, and then a 50 minute run. That was my long run. So it was literally 11.4 miles. And this was another thing that my coach really designed for me, which I appreciated. 
is we went time-based versus distance-based. Because a lot of times, right, when we're building up for a marathon, we're really focusing on the miles. We're focusing on building up that weekly volume. We're focusing on those long runs. And everything's about miles. And this has been actually a, a great mindset shift for me because I'm not comparing like how I feel on these runs to what I was doing during marathon training. It's just allowing me to go out there and go for some easy recovery jogs after my marathon because my body's still recovering. So for instance, I only went for three runs that first week back. Second week back, which was week four after my marathon, I did run five days. It was a 40-minute run, a 50-minute run, a 50-minute run, a 40-minute run, and then a 70-minute run. I ran for an hour and 10 minutes, which was a total of 23.5 miles. So it was like a six-miler for my long run, right? That's like nothing if you're used to, right, like 30 miles per week and you were marathon training, but that's what it should be, right? Because the body is still recovering. And right now, at the time of this recording, I'm on week five, and I'm actually really excited because we're going to start working strides back into the mix. So really focusing on that running form, getting the legs to turn over for a short bout of time. And I'm excited to actually do that for two runs uh, this week. But really, when I look at the plan for this week, I'm going to be running 28 miles. And again, just to give you context, you know, I did peak in the last marathon training cycle at 52 miles. And I ran three weeks of over 50 plus miles. So you can see this is a gradual build back up, right? So the following week, I'm going to be in the 30s. Um, so you need to respect the recovery process. And this is the one time during your calendar year that you should be doing this. And don't feel guilty about it at all because your body needs the recovery. And if you don't allow it, to properly recover, then that's when we start, you know, seeing injuries creep up in the next training cycle. So that was mistake number one is not taking enough days off of running. You don't get any, any bonus points for, you know, posting, you know, you went for your shakeout run three days after your marathon or four or five days after your marathon. Um, you don't get any bonus points for that. So really, I want you to think about this. If you've basically made this mistake before, I really would love uh, for you to implement this. And then let me know how you feel, honestly, when you try it. And let me know how you did on the next training cycle, because that's when you're really going to see the benefit in that you stay healthy, you feel fresher, you're actually ready for harder training in the next training cycle. So mistake number two is going to be ignoring movement and not moving at all for one to two weeks after your race. And post-race, it's common for runners to neglect stretching, mobility exercises, and this can lead to stiffness and reduced range of motion. And regular stretching and mobility work really can help improve blood flow, decrease muscle soreness, so the DOMS or the delayed onset muscle soreness, and can really enhance recovery. And, you know, I highly recommend my four hip mobility exercises, which are nice and gentle to really kind of get the hips going, stretch out those thigh muscles. So whether it's your quads, your hamstrings, the glutes, the piriformis, right? All those muscles that are sore after we run a marathon, as well as my seven foam roller exercises for runners. Um, you can get both of those instructional videos in the recovery blueprint download that I mentioned earlier. Um, but we have to move. Movement is medicine. Movement helps stimulate recovery. So you don't want to just like sit on the couch, be a couch potato for a week after your marathon. You're not going to run, but you're going to do an active recovery, nice and gentle and go out for walks. Walks are great. I call myself like the healthy walker uh, the week after the marathon. So you want to make sure you're getting up, moving around, and you're not totally sedentary. Mistake number three, overindulging in post-race celebration. So it's natural to want to celebrate after completing a marathon. Heck, it's like a huge accomplishment. I'm all about celebrations, um, but overindulging in the unhealthy food and alcohol. Like, yeah, you want a beer or two, that's totally cool. Like you want that burger, whatever, after your marathon, I'm totally fine with that. But doing that for like four or five days after your marathon, that's going to really inhibit 
the recovery process and can really hinder like that long-term running goal that you have. So be mindful of your post-race nutrition and maintain a balanced diet. So you, you want to think about your food like you did before your race is fuel, right? And, you know, what really you put in your body is going to make a difference in terms of like your race performance, but it's also going to make a difference in terms of recovery. So, you know, when it comes down to nutrition, like not drinking enough water or only drinking water without electrolytes, most people think about hydration, electrolytes before the race, during the race, but they forget after the race. It's super important as well even though it's not for performance, but the goal is for recovery. So don't forget that. You want to make sure you are hydrating as well as with electrolytes and then also not eating enough healthy foods to stimulate recovery, right? So sometimes, like I mentioned, you know, you can overindulge on like the unhealthy foods, but then also we start to see people um, who either like you can make those unhealthy choices, but then also you can start to be afraid of weight gain because heck, you're not running anymore, right? You are taking this 10 day hiatus at minimum that Dwayne already talked about in tip number one here. But some people get afraid of like weight gain here. And especially that first week after your marathon, you cannot restrict calories and you need to fuel your body with some healthy foods right? Vitamins, minerals, like all the food groups, make sure you're having those whole foods that your body needs for recovery. All those organ systems need for recovery. So make sure you're doing that, like eat plenty of vegetables. Here's where, yes, we can start to add fiber back in our diet and, you know, have some leafy green vegetables, all that stuff that we probably stopped eating a couple of days before your marathon. This is when your body needs it for immunity, um, for health, recovery. So make sure you're not restricting calories at this point. Um, you know, eat some healthy meals, have some nice wholesome foods that are going to really allow your body to recover. You know, eat those carbs, replenish the glycogen stores and your protein that will aid in muscle repair. Super, super important during this time period. This is not the time period to start restricting calories, worrying about weight gain at this point in time. Don't worry. You are going to get back to running and your body will get back to feeling somewhat normal. But you have to remember, like going through a marathon, just like your body didn't probably feel great the week before the marathon as you were tapering and as you were starting to probably add a little bit more carbs, um, you probably didn't feel like the healthiest at that time, you probably felt like you were keeping some water weight as your body should have, right? Because you needed it for to actually perform for the race. Um, don't be afraid of restricting for this week. In the grand scheme of things, right, throughout the 52 weeks out of the year, it's not going to make a dramatic difference, all right? The key is really maintaining healthy lifestyle choices throughout that calendar year. So you won't need to worry about kind of calorie consumption and, you know, thinking of food in a negative connotation. So that was kind of mistake number two is either overindulging in the post-race celebration or really not hydrating or fueling properly after your marathon. And that was actually, I'm sorry, my apologies. That was mistake number three. Um, movement was number two. Now, mistake number four, not valuing sleep, <laughs> right guys? Sleep is the low hanging fruit and we need to reframe sleep as an active recovery tactic rather than a passive activity that you just don't have time for, right? Because we're all busy. We all got to-do list. Uh, trust me, I struggle with this every single day when I have things on my to-do list here. You guys could see my post-it and I'm like, do I finish this or do I actually close my computer and you know dedicate to sleep? But sleep is active recovery. And during sleep, guys, we release human growth hormone which really helps your muscles repair after a hard workout or a long run. And a marathon is what? Both of those. It's a hard workout and a long run all in one, right? For 26.2 miles. So we need sleep and we need to allow that human growth hormone to be released during sleep so our muscles can actually repair. Now, guys, coming up next, I'm going to share with you the final mistake runners make after their marathon 
And I'm actually going to include one bonus mistake. But before I do that, if this has been educational for you and you appreciate these tips and me sharing this, please hit that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications to stay updated on future videos that are going to really help fuel your fitness journey. And this would just allow me to continue creating content like this and allow runners to continue doing the thing that they love and enjoy lifelong injury-free running after their marathon. It'd mean the world to me if you can do that. Hit that like button, please. And thank you. Now getting to tip number five or mistake number five, however you want to look at it here, is losing sight of goals or focusing on the wrong goals. And once a major race is over, some runners really struggle to stay motivated and they may lose focus and because you're not having the consistency in, in training anymore. There's no like goal, right? There's no like metal at the end at the end there. There's like, you know, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So it's important for us to set new goals and maintain a training routine to keep progressing as a runner. So really thinking about what is going to be your next goal? And it doesn't need to be registering for the next marathon, right? And it doesn't need to be running the next race either. It could be, and it should be thinking about, I just finished a marathon training cycle. What is my next training cycle? For most runners, I recommend this is a time period for base training. This is where we establish that strong foundation as runners and we double down on strength training which is going to be super protective for your body during your next training cycle. Or maybe for some of you, you might go into some maybe shorter distance 5K training, specific training, and really work on more speed work since you're really not working on like weekly running volume or you're not working on really those long, long, long runs, right? So think about what is your next goal? For me, it's been great to like get back in the gym um, because I actually was not in the gym for two weeks prior to my marathon because I knew the most important thing during taper time was to get my body feeling great. I knew I was not going to gain any more strength at that point. Um, I was healthy. I wasn't like battling an injury where I didn't need to do like specific corrective exercises for that injury. So it's been like fantastic this morning, just getting in the gym and starting to lift and gradually increase my weights again. I'm excited, honestly, for my really next base training phase, which actually won't come until after my fun Disney race, the dopey challenge that I'm going to do in eight weeks from today, actually. Um, so after that race, then I'm going to really go into a, a base training cycle. When my girls have like their busy travel volleyball season, that's when I'm going to be like really hitting the weights heavy, hard, and really focusing on building strength for my next marathon training cycle that will start in late June, July period. So think about like what is going to be your main focus here. Maybe you've been struggling with an injury and now your main focus is to like actually find out like what are the root causes of why this injury keeps creeping up every time I try to train for a marathon. Why does my IT band always start hurting at mile 16, mile 18 when I'm doing marathon training, right? This is the time period to work on those things, to really find an expert who can help identify those root causes, provide you a plan to fix those root causes. So then you are actually healthy the next training cycle. So those are like two examples that I find very common. Um, it's not just to go into like hibernation mode. Don't really do anything. Run just, yeah, you know, if you want to go for a run, you go for a run. Like, yes, the mind needs a break. And that's why I really, again, highly recommend taking that two week period after your marathon to give the mind a break, but then get into some structured routine and do it in a progressive fashion to get you back into running, but then really focusing on building that strong foundation that we talk about frequently. The other thing besides losing sight of goals is really focusing on the wrong goals. And what do I mean by that? I mean, obsessing over not hitting an outcome goal that you set for yourself. And sometimes, most frequently, I hear this from many runners, is they set that time goal that really came out of thin air. Just like I did for my first marathon, I was like, I would love to do sub four hours. I had no business to really put 
that goal out there. And a lot of the runners I work with for their first time uh, marathon, uh, I do need to give a shout out to uh, my New York City marathons, Mary, who crushed her marathon this week. I talked about Mary last week on the podcast. Um, just crushed New York for her first marathon to finish it feeling strong. She actually sent me a video today and I just loved watching that, right? Or Sandra, who is like, first time running a marathon after surgery. Um, she's been through so much in her personal life to be able to do that. Um, or Kristen who was battling it band issues, right. When she got up to her, you know, longer distance, uh, miles that I mentioned before and was able to overcome that and be able to, you know, crush New York. I was just like, so proud of my athletes or Janice too. I, I give Janice a shout out who is, She's 66. She's almost going to be 67 guys. And she had knee arthritis, you know, was told to like, you know, stop running. And she went back to New York for the fifth time now and was able to complete that. And I'm just so proud of her because she really did this whole marathon training cycle without knee pain at all. So I'm just super proud of her. So sorry about that. I didn't mean to get, but I got to give a shout out to my athletes too. It's just like front of mind for me. Um, but when I start working with individuals who maybe they're running their first marathon, it's, it's never a time goal that we talk about, right? We talk about process goals. And for a lot of my athletes, it's like, okay, our goal for this marathon is going to be to actually, you know, run it with heart to be able to, you know, challenge yourself, challenge your mind, finish feeling strong right? Like those process goals or whatever process goals that you set for yourself for the marathon, that is what you need to focus on and not focusing on some random time goal that you really arbitrarily set for yourself, or you just popped your half marathon number into your calculator. And I just had this conversation with a bunch of my athletes is you can't do that for your first couple of marathons. It doesn't work. It, it is super rare that anyone ever hits when you pop in the, the calculators, your half marathon time, and then you look at the equivalent for your marathon time. I, I've run three, like I mentioned, I have never been able to actually hit that time yet. So until you're really experienced at the marathon distance, you are not going to hit that time of what your quote unquote running fitness tells you in the calculators. So it's not simple math. A marathon deserves serious respect. And I can't emphasize that enough. And I hate for people to feel like they've been a failure or disappointed because they didn't get sub four, they didn't get a BQ, they didn't get whatever time goal, sub five, sub six, whatever your goal was. And I hate for someone who completed 26.2 miles, which is like absolutely incredible to ever feel like they failed or they could have done better. Because if that is why you're running, like that's not why you're running right? Like you didn't go into running because of that. You probably went into running for a host of other reasons, whether it was weight loss, whether it was to get a healthier lifestyle, to lower your blood pressure, to stop drinking alcohol, right? Like these are all the common things that I hear a lot and um, to maybe get over grief and you lost someone that was close to you, right? Or you just wanted to be a better role model for your kids because you were realizing you weren't living a healthy lifestyle and you want your kids to like look up to someone, um, a parent that is living that healthy lifestyle and that like, go back to those things. And it's not the time, the time on the clock is a nice challenge and I understand it. I get it. And for me, it is a nice challenge because it, it gives us an objective way to measure, right? But it's not the only way to measure progress guys. So if you've never run a marathon healthy, if you've never felt strong, and, you know, finishing a marathon where you were the one passing people, you weren't walking, you weren't cramping, you weren't bonking, you weren't hitting the wall, right? Like those all, if you were able to do that, like that's what you need to celebrate and focus on meeting and hitting your process goals. The outcome goals and the time goals will eventually come, but you need to follow the process. So that's really that fifth mistake is not focusing on the things you need to focus on in terms of goals or just losing focus on like, what is the next goal and kind of spiraling down and being like, my marathon's over. Oh, I have no motivation to run anymore. Um, so now the one bonus mistake 
and this is, I hear this a lot. So this is, this is a good one. If you really raced your marathon, meaning you didn't just do it for fun, right? Uh, you raced it. You did a whole training cycle and you went out hard for this marathon race. Please do not try to capitalize on your quote unquote, here are the air quotes again, running fitness by trying to PR another race within two months of your marathon. And because you feel so great and you're like, wow, this marathon training cycle went phenomenal and you might, you know, PR'd your marathon. You felt like top of the world. You're so proud of your accomplishment. Within these next two months is not the time to capitalize on that fitness and, and get a PR. If you try to do that, you will <laughs> most likely either A, be disappointed you didn't PR and B, not take the proper recovery that I mentioned earlier, and then C, possibly get injured. So you need to think about this in training cycles. This is the end of the chapter or the end of the book. Close the book. And then we enter a new phase. And now this is the recovery phase and the base building phase. If you want to run a fun turkey trot, a fun Christmas, you know, holiday race, uh, you know, the season that we're in right now, that's great. And you know what, if your body feels good and you want to go out and race it, then you can do that if your body feels good, but I don't want you to put expectations that you're looking to PR. And sometimes I see runners getting into that trap of basically trying to like capitalize on every little accomplishment, not allowing the body to properly recover detrain a little bit, and then you start to train again. So we need to allow for these peaks and valleys in our training in order to stay healthy for longevity. So I hope that was clear. I hope that these tips really resonated with you. And, um, you know, as a running health expert, I help runners avoid these post-marathon pitfalls all the time and guide them to a more balanced and injury-free running journey. So if you need clarity and focus on how to integrate post-marathon training for a more balanced and injury-free journey, then, you know, you might need specific recovery exercises for running. You might need to learn the strategies of building that strong foundation and proper strength training for running these next four months post-marathon, if that's you, that's exactly what we do in our Spark Healthy Runner coaching program. We teach you how to grow as a runner to not only crush your next running goal, but avoid feeling frustrated because you constantly get injured or you're not getting any faster. So we act as your guide in mastering the six key steps to growing as a runner. We focus on mindset, strength training, structured run plan in a progressive fashion, nutrition, recovery and race strategy. And when you get the structure to execute those six key steps in your running journey, you'll not only feel more confident getting stronger and faster, but you'll stay healthy and enjoy the process of running again and training. And yes, you will crush some races along the way and beyond that. So just like Mary, just like, right, Sandra, just like Kristen, who I mentioned earlier, like, you will be able to do that. So just like a well-built home will require a little maintenance and bring you a lifetime of memories for you and your family, so will your running. And you can learn more about our Spark Healthy Runner Signature Coaching Program and schedule a call with myself by going to learn.sparkhealthyrunner.com forward slash coaching. That's all I have for you today. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget, get your download your, your free recovery blueprint to maximize your post-marathon recovery by the link uh, in the show notes below. As always, guys, let's maintain a strong mind, a strong body, and let's just keep on running. Until next time.